Okay, we're rolling this. I usually uh, roll a straight line across the back wall so I can get up close to it. And then we'll roll back about five feet uh, and all the way across and then we'll broadcast our chips. I'll broadcast them so that they don't come right to the edge. We'll overlap it and that'll let some drift back and forth so we don't get lines on it. When we do this, these scrollers are hollow and if you put them in the pail and leave it there, they can fill with epoxy. And then when you roll it, they leak out both sides, leaving little lines. So when you put it in, dip it short, even either halfway, or at least pull it out right away so it doesn't fill with epoxy. Also, I like to wet it all the way across so that when I'm rolling, I can come back over what I already wet down, and it resets my roller. And we move pretty quickly because the glossiness is a function of how long it catalyzes. So if I do this and 20 minutes later come back and roll over it, I can get a slightly different look and I could see some roller marks. So it's not critical to go real fast. On the other hand, we try to do a fairly even pattern. And see, I roll all the way across. So when I roll it this way, each time I come back, I actually sit the roller in that real thick bit that I just put out and it re-wets my roller, making it easy to Keep rolling a nice film. Comes back over, wets it, wets it. Okay, now I'm gonna come back about three more feet, go all the way to the end, and then I'm gonna broadcast my chips. I don't want to be too far away because sometimes it's hard for me to throw that far. So I'm just gonna go back here. And it's better to roll more times than fewer times, so if in doubt, just go over it. Where I had all these dribbles here, I might have to go over it twice to make those smooth out nicely, because I spilled some, so I'm going over them. But I'm going to go back over that same area to make sure that I pulled all those drip marks out. Instead of pulling it off, 
So when you see me go the other direction, you'll see me flip it the other direction. It just keeps from coming on. And if my roller starts coming off, I'll just hit the frame and tap it back on. I especially want to do that before I put it in the pail because I don't want to fill my roller up full of epoxy and then weak lines down each side. Okay, we're almost ready to put our color chips on now. I'm just going to square this off here a little bit. It just helps me know where one started and one stopped. Now when I do my chips, I'm going to take these, I'm going to take just three fingers at a time. I'm going to throw it way up and hit the ceiling or light fixture or the sidewall. I'm going to go across and then I'm going to walk back again in any area that wasn't quite right, I'm going to try to hit again. Now, it's hardest to do underneath a box like that back there because it's hard to, to broadcast and get it up under without a problem. If I don't hit something with these, I can get a lump that will just fall on the ground from this pinch that I did. Well, the client has to have it fairly dense, so I'll have to make a decision when I have it dense enough. But remember, we're going to overlap, so this area here shouldn't be too dense because I'm going to throw some more in a minute or two, and I don't want to get it too heavy in any one spot, so. Okay, looks pretty good. We'll roll back another few feet. Now you see there's some chips here on the floor. I'm just gonna forget about those because when I roll this next section, it's just gonna, they're just gonna disappear. Okay, I'm just gonna square it off here. I saw a little drip mark back here, so I'm fine going back. Sometimes there's a liquid coming off the end of your roller. And now I'm going to broadcast, and it's going to overlap that. So because it's more dense back there and a little less as it comes towards me, that's not a problem because this is where we overlap. surprised how uniformly it goes a lot more than you'd think it would. The problem is sometimes you get so far away that you can't get it. So now I'm doing two finger pinch to catch in the areas where the overlap wasn't good. A little two finger have to use some judgment when you're done. Okay, a common problem is as you're broadcasting, sometimes you'll push some out of the pail or you'll get more than you want to go somewhere. So here we intentionally put too much material down. So I'm just going to brush a little bit of it off here. And then all I'm going to do is take my, my roller. roll over it. Now, that's fixed. When I broadcast, I won't have that big lump there. So you can do that. Now, if there's a lump way out there, I wouldn't bother with it because we're here we can wet it all down the same level. But if I reached out there that we did five minutes ago, we might see a little glossy spot where we did it. So I'm not going to take the chance of having that happen. Okay, so I'm just going to, I already cut around the edges. I'm going to come back another three or four feet. 